Good morning, friends. Uh, we're very grateful that uh, we are here to speak to all of you and to share our experiences of working with rural women for the past three decades. So I'm going to take the first uh, leap and I'm going to make five points. The first point is about how to get women out of home, not to keep them at home. The second is how to keep them at the workplace. The third is about is it enough to keep, just keep a woman at the workplace. The fourth is how to understand the home and the workplace in a much wider context. So the first question is what keeps a woman at home? And what I'm going to talk about, or Ramesh is going to talk about, obviously is not rocket science, but sometimes the truth needs to be repeated over and over again to reach its depths. The first reason why a woman is kept at home is the fact that she is considered the primary homekeeper. And if she is able to do all that well and then has a bit of free time in her life or a free few years in her life, then she can do something outside. But the moment something calls her back at home, if she's not there, then she's not a good woman. So biological as well as social obligations, biological of course, if, if we menstruate every month, we bear children, but beyond that, there's nothing biological. Everything is social. To keep up at night, to feed the baby, to burp the baby, to change the diapers, to raise a child, to cook at home, these are not just women's responsibilities. And while sensitive men will help women at home, and we appreciate that very much, it's not just a question of men helping their wives, because the moment you say you're helping, it means that the primary responsibility is that of the woman. So the first thing is, how do we share household work so that a woman is free of those to be able to do some work outside. The second question is of economics. She is actually working outside. It's only in serials that we see women inside home wearing a lot of jewelry and plotting you know, the, the end of the world. Uh, but we find that a lot of women's work, whether it is inside the home or whether it's outside the home, is not measured. And so therefore her contribution to the national economy is not recognized to the extent that it should. And I think that those figures, and I, I, I you know, uh, reiterate what the first our keynote speaker spoke, that there aren't data, there aren't enough data to tell us what the real contribution of women is at home. Now just take a plot, now we, we, are both, work, we both work in, in, in a rural area. The size of a farm is not divided into home consumption, national market, or international market. So a woman is contributing to all corners of the field. But the moment the grain or the moment the milk of the cow reaches the village, what we call the Vesh in Marathi, it, when it reaches that, immediately every, the woman who's washed the cow, cleaned the cow shed, milked the cow many times, but the name in the, in the, in the cooperative dairy is that of the man. And so therefore what happens is that that is the person that gets to vote, that is the person that decides the price of milk, and also decides what happens to the money that comes from the sale of the milk. And so therefore, this is where we need to change. The issue of family, tradition, culture, everything can change in a family. Traditions change, culture changes, and we have to question why culture drags its feet where women's rights are concerned. And why, why culture, is, culture is about food, culture is about dance, it's about music, it's about the fun in life, it's what enriches our lives. And as many cultures as we have, that beautiful is our country and that beautiful is our world. So why does culture drag its feet where women's rights are concerned? And then the whole notion of honor. The family's honor, the caste's honor, the religion's honor, the nation's honor. Everything depends on women's behavior. Good morning, friends. I like the theme of this Congress. Uh, 
today, this uh, purposeful purposes. Actually, it's the, we were both Manisha and myself, Manisha with uh, science microbiology background, and uh, I was at uh, chemical engineering background. Uh, it's the per we were looking for purpose in life, that is what drove us uh, from cities to live in a village and work in villages. I saw poor people living in slums being thrown out of Delhi in 70s, early 70s, because they wanted to, the government wanted to make city, uh, Delhi a beautiful city. Then when I came to Bombay for my PhD, uh, we started working in slums, uh, slums of different types who were on the footpath or uh, semi-permanent, permanent slums in Charles, different areas. And we saw uh, those slums also being, uh, slum people being driven out uh, tickets were bought for them. They were confined in uh, around the railway stations and then put on uh, trains and, uh, and buses to go to their native places. This poverty is a real challenge. If we want, all of us want development, many, uh, many parties have come on into power in the name of development. So we want development, we want peace, we want human rights, we want democracy. And all these things that uh, we cherish uh, are uh, not possible and are endangered if there is poverty. Poverty is a human right. All people, for uh, human rights for all people all the time. So therefore, uh, poverty is a very big challenge. In 70s, we were told uh, that uh, poverty problem cannot be solved unless there is development. And probably for some time there was belief in trickle-down effect. But now we know that trickle-down effect hasn't worked. In fact, over these uh, 70 years after independence, disparities have grown. Discriminations have not disappeared. Discrimination have not uh, reduced even. Uh, they are on the rise. Even on the basis of caste and religion, we see that identity politics is increasing discriminations and uh, disparities and distress among the rural poor is also increasing. And what we understood by working with the poor is that uh, poverty is not an economic issue, just an economic issue. You can't give money to people or loans, micro loans to people and their poverty can be removed. You can't, uh, IRDP, there are 32 evaluations of integrated rural development plan program in India, and uh, that's why it was discarded that it has proved that just transferring income generating assets to the poor people when their uh, uh, consumption needs are not satisfied, and when the market forces are leading them to uh, alienation of assets among the poor, then IRDP program cannot succeed. <clears throat> Poverty is a complex issue because people are deprived, poor people are not just deprived of income generating assets or incomes or their consumption needs, they are deprived of their education, they are deprived of uh, miss right to education, they are deprived of right to health, health care, uh, they can't get loans if they want to work. Uh, so all these problems are combined, they don't have, com uh, they don't have self confidence. In India, especially, the caste factor is also there, that uh, class discrimination exists, and uh, uh, the disparities, uh, they say that class on in, in India has uh, come sitting on the back of the caste system. That who are poor is obviously the people who are lowest in the caste hierarchy. So therefore, uh, what we need uh, is a comprehensive approach to uh, poverty. And poverty is a big challenge for uh, all the corporates, for all the people living in the cities, because with poverty comes, as we have seen, we were in US for one year in the Johns Hopkins and we were moving around in the black areas. And we have seen that poverty also in, uh, is combined in throughout the world. Uh, it's a threat to peace and it's uh, combined with crime, addictions, everything uh, comes with poverty. Uh, and therefore, a comprehensive approach is necessary. Uh, that's why when we started working in villages, uh, people's life can't be compartmentalized, 
and therefore we work on health, we work on education, we work with children, we work on gender discriminations, on caste discriminations, uh, on, uh, on democratic principles, on working together. Uh, we have uh, different programs and we do collaborate with government, but unfortunately the government, uh, the, means, uh, when the government programs are implemented, they have their own machinery.